summer is almost here. So you know what that means. It means installing air conditioning into the bus. First step for getting the bus comfortable is to have some air conditioning. So we started the process of getting our head of our mini spit set up. Pretty typical start to the workday in the bus is trying to get my gloves on and finding three left gloves and no right gloves. I don't believe that that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> We're Mela and Don. We uprooted our lives and left Los Angeles with the dream of converting an MCI D3 40-foot bus into a tiny home on wheels. We are sharing our progress one bite at a time. <laughs> what? How to eat an elephant one bite at a time. <laughs> <laughs>
and this will all be covered up by our, our barden wood trim that we put in later on. So in order to mount these to the furring strips we got there, I need to put some holes in them. Luckily I got this drill press. And then we went ahead and screwed that into place. Nothing in the bus works as it normally would in a house to cover it on the hatch. They give you these little plastic screws, go through the center and into your floor to hold it in, but it was just not going to work on this hatch area for what we wanted to. So Don just found this super duty awesome construction glue. We did a little test with scrap pieces and it sticks really good. So we just went with that and glued the trim down on here. And it works pretty good. Big thank you to our new Rehabitribe BFF, Seekers of Rhythm Studio. If you'd like to help us make videos, we'll include a link to our Patreon below. As you can see, maybe you can't get shorts on, and that means it's warm out. First step for getting the bus comfortable is to have some air conditioning. So we started the process of getting our head of our mini spit set up. This area here is where we're going to do the internal mounting of the mini split. So it should be pretty straightforward <laughs> to figure out exactly how this thing goes, get everything prepped and ready to go. I could actually use a little air conditioning in here today. I've had the skylights open all day, so plenty of heat coming through those windows. Got the brace, the electronics for the unit, and the head. And one of the things I have to do is figure out how to route the uh, hoses that come out of the back and route them through properly so that we'll be able to go out of the bus. Comes with a remote bubble wrap screws, batteries for the remote and the manual, and then everything else for the unit is in the other box which holds the heat pump and the main extension for connecting the two. Did some research, I wanted a 110 volt mini split, and the one we chose to go with is the Pioneer WT012ALFI19HLD. I'd like to talk to the marketing department that named that one. Oh, I think it's probably a good idea to open the windows. 
and get that fan going because it's warm in here. So from what I understand, I need to hook up two different cables for a Freon or some kind of refrigerant a drip pipe for the condensation to run out and then some electrical. Before I do any of it, I'm going to read the instructions. Probably what my wife would like me to do. Okay, I read it all and it says ask for somebody to help you. I'm gonna ask Dad to help me though. <laughs> He's uh, pretty good at these kind of things and uh, I don't want to screw it up because it'll be about 500 bucks to refill the unit with proper refrigerant if I screw it up. So since I'm gonna also be putting electrical running through the back here, I need to make some openings. That's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> Gonna put a hole through the hatch area in the back. So that we'll have an area to run our mini split lines down where we're gonna mount one of the exterior mini split heat pumps. So now I'm gonna put a little super construction heavy duty adhesive in. So I've made sure I've got all my piping here laid out so it's all together. And then the next really big step is gonna be putting my signal cable and that's the cable that will control the head of the unit from the base of the unit and it's also going to run all the electrical power up into the head of the unit as well the signal cable for the unit i got has each of the wires labeled one two three and i don't have my glasses on it's a ground so there's an electrical front cover on the front i just am popping it open they call it the main control PCR. From there I can see where my one, two, three, and ground cables are gonna go. And I could also see where my cable is gonna come in through the back. So now I've gotta snake it through and make it work. Wiring up the electrical four wires that I just showed you into the unit is fairly simple as long as you don't drop any of the posts. Unfortunately on the unit I have you do have to pull the ground post all the way out and of course I dropped it inside the unit. Had to shake it around and find it and get it to come back out. Other than that it went pretty smooth. I will be having a trained electrician, my dad, double check my work before we plug anything to power. Now when we ordered our mini split I ordered it specifically at a length that I knew would work to run down into our engine bay and be able to be pulled up out of the engine bay and set to the side. Looking at the way it was delivered, I should have sent it back the minute I got it because there's a crimp in the line. It's only about three inches in. Uh, luckily, I think my dad's got all the tools we need to cut and reflange it and set it back up again properly. So this is one of those things that the uh, HVAC guy would take care of it for you if you just hired somebody. So we were able to only cut about three inches off, but that's where that crimp was. And that would most likely reduce the flow of the coolant. So you see how this is here? See that fits in there? Mm-hmm. Okay. You're gonna have to flare your piece. Ah, so you stick it through that, and then you use your 
but use your flaring tool. just goes zip and it's done, huh? Well, I think the machine probably has a certain torque it puts on it too, as it does it, you know? Probably knows it's Where it doesn't over, if you over torque it, you crack your line. And that's, that's game over, and you start over again. Okay, I'm feeling really good about it. All right, let's see what it looks like there, Mr. Factory. Factory torque, that's what they called me in college. So one of the reasons most people hire professionals is because you want to use a torque wrench and it can be really tricky to get the torque set the right way. So Google it or get a professional to help you. Oh, hi. Oh, I scared her. Yeah. Hi. But I want to put the adhesive. Okay, you want to operate both wrenches or? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that feels pretty tight. Yeah, it does feel tight. Because we're going to be covering up that area, we knew we had to go ahead and put our 120 wiring through there now. Doing weightlifting today? I think so. Yep. <laughs> you can lift the weight, you just never put it down. You're in business. Let's do it. What do you want me to do? Um, you want to try to do that? Just let me know if you have trouble with it, okay? okay. Let me get mom out. Uh, I think it would be. Yeah. When we do that, we'll have enough bodies. I can yeah, once you go get her mowing, you know, we'll occasionally have to just make sure it's still feeding out. With all of us threading the pipes through the holes, no one was watching the camera, and the battery died. It was a tight fit, but we were able to get it in place successfully. So that's as far as we could get with the mini split for right now. Now that that mini split is in, we don't want to have to take it out. We could if we ever need to get back there, but we don't really want to. <laughs> Our outside unit of our mini split is going to be housed near our engine bay. But before we can install the outside unit of our mini split, we need to do some work in the engine area. And until I know exactly what we need to do to be sure we're not messing anything up in the engine area, we're going to hold off on that for just a little bit. So while we're getting our air conditioning set up and ready for summer, there's another aspect that's really important for helping us keep the bus cool in the summer. And that is that we need to put the trim on our skylights so that we can put coverings over them to keep the heat out when it gets real hot. We were playing around with different ideas of how to put some trim on our skylights and also the emergency hatches in the ceiling. And we really like the way the Max fan just kind of disappears into the ceiling without making it a big feature. So we wanted our trim piece to be white and we decided we had to go and experiment and look for something different and we found this vinyl molding and it's kind of supposed to be for floor trim like in bathrooms and stuff like that and so we thought that would be really great and sturdy and deal well up against our skylights. But we'll share that with you next time. Ready? Keep 
Tyler, right on the head. I know.